Hey, how's it going, everybody? Charlie Wilson here, a.k.a. Sinister Charlie. Welcome back. Uh, back to Maxor, uh, I guess. Um, yeah, we've been doing the um, uh, Mike Burnfire stuff a lot recently, so I thought I'd switch it up a little bit. Plus, I've been wanting to get back to more uh, Maxor stuff. <clears throat> um, yeah, and it's pretty late or early or however you want to put it. Uh, it's like 3 a.m. here. I try to get in. I, I try to get in at least two videos a day, but sometimes that doesn't work. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Let's go. I don't uh, do maternal um, review. This is a suggestion. Um, I don't. Um, I haven't played a Doom game since probably Doom sixty four. I think. Um, after that, I probably moved on to Quake, and then. Um, like other first person shooters, probably like, you know, uh, Call of Duty, like Modern Warfare. Yeah, that's probably what I moved on to for first person shooters. So I haven't played a Goom, Doom, a Goom game. I haven't played a Goom game in forever. Uh, but yeah, this is Max, so I might as well give him a thumbs up. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. I'm sure it's full of Max Orianness. I swear to God, if you throw me into that portal, I will fuck Who is that? Is that Germa? Doom Eternal is a game with so much testosterone dripping from its orifices that it caused me to create a son via mitosis. In this adventure, you play as yep. John Doom, a I expect man stricken with less. irrationally severe autism, who does not consider or think through his actions and effects on other people, and mm -hmm. in his quest to save mankind, kills God, God God, and Satan God God, who is also uh -huh. himself. If this in-depth and engaging hardcore male gameplay yeah. sounds appealing, then I get some Astolfo action. Damn it. Oh, son of a bitch. Well, never mind. I've got the game <laughs> for you. I needed my uh, uh, girl slash boy anime uh, fix. <laughs> this game is, of course, the sequel to the critically acclaimed Doom 2016 with a few key differences. All right, then, buddy. I'm going to shit yourself. Which meaningfully extends and builds off of the gameplay and challenges that we love, then extends them some more off of a fucking cliff until the product that emerges out the other side resembles crack concentrate. If you're watching mm -hmm. this, I'm assuming you've probably played the game since no, I don't actually I want to help people. I've seen other things. people play. I'm here to entertain people, and if you're clamoring for entertainment and haven't purchased this game yet, do yourself a favor. There's enough male hormones here to try <laughs> Why and, a and I can guarantee you results, my <laughs> fellow Sigma males. So whether you're a psychopath like me. I love the fact that he always like breaks up, breaks down, you know, in a fun loving way, unlike uh, Jimmy Fallon. Or new to modern Doom games. Come with me on this amazing journey through Twitch gameplay, beautiful environments, nonsensically fucked up lore, and remixed Mongolian throat singing. For money is temporary, but Doom is eternal. It does have some kick ass music. I would say that Doom Eternal's gameplay is quite unique and not for the reasons that you would think. Everything in Doom Eternal is funneled directly into a single, robust, multifaceted, multinational, and unilaterally combat system from which the entire game is built around. But Maxor, I hear you thinking, that's every game ever. <laughs> yes. Every I wasn't thinking game ever. ever. If I, for instance, became 12 and booted up GTA 5, I would be able to do at least a dozen unfun activities. Doom's design is focused harder than the average Persona fan on his local oh, playground, boy. and that is special. I tried you playing Persona play 5, that is uh, fun or you will lose. Yeah. So as good as 2016 tried. was, a Polygon journalist could beat the first half, and that's unacceptable, because yes, it is actually unfun to play games after having a lobotomy. In other games, I get to choose between things like stealth, vehicles, or outright combat. Bad. Yet Doom Eternal asks the question, why not why force not all you of to them? use every mechanic all the time without mm. stopping? In a world Sounds where AAA awesome. studios try to pander to everyone, it's refreshing to have a game that sets out to do one thing the best, and actually have developers who give a shit about linear design and gameplay. And the main component of that gameplay is the arsenal, because John Doom uses every weapon throughout the game. The first shotgun is used in the last level, and the last level is used by the first shotgun. When you get an upgrade, it isn't a replacement, <laughs> it's a genuine addition to 
into your arsenal. Every one of them has specific uses, and yet these don't interfere at all. They enhance. How do I kill an enemy? Well, shoot his hands off. Fire a rocket. Fire a ballista. Fire flames. Freeze him. Fire fire on his freeze and pro shotgun. Shotgun. Brain aneurysm. Just as important as how you kill is how you heal and how you restore. Fortunately, the aggression of this game rivals my dog in a kindergarten. Like real life, the only way to get ahead of the competition is to kill them. How do I heal when low? Kill them. How do I get ammo back? Kill, kill them, them with a chainsaw. Oh. In addition, most weapons in the game have two mods <laughs> which completely change their behavior. Such stunning examples would be the microwave beam, the automatic shotgun, and the fucking destroyer blade. God, that shit's cool. But on top of eight weapons, 12 mods, and a declining mental state, we keep going. More than any <clears> one <throat> weapon, you'll be using your suit abilities, and they all have individual buttons. Hey. This is in addition to the eight that you use for weapons. These would be things I want like that keep for though. fast, grenade for death, Swedish grenade for life, punch my for no reason, boring. and a flamethrower for armor. I play Invoker in Dota 2, and this shit makes me play my keyboard like it's a fucking Moonlight Sonata. I thoroughly recommend playing PC and never using the weapon wheel for maximal Ritalin output. And if you can't switch weapons fast or play on easy mode, that's fine, man. We're all busy. How about I give you two more buttons? You thought I was done. <laughs> There's two ways to kill a demon in Doom Eternal. The fun way or the funny way. And to maximize the funniness <laughs> level, we have the, the Crucible, which is a direct, instantaneous kill on every enemy. Ooh. Giant area boss, dead. Previous area boss, dead. The final boss, fuck him. Now I hear you thinking, Josh, that sounds pretty strong. Oh boy, buckle your ass. Because the second super weapon on my extensive list of two things is the BFG, which canonically stands for big fucking gun also canonically it fires a hole directly into the core of oh, Mars nice. you can't just shoot a hole into the surface uh, of Mars I just did now, I could kill an enemy the long way, or I could kill him and his dog faster than the ATF. I don't kill those It clears dogs. out everything you can see instantly. I am so thankful the game limits how many times you can do this. Now, I understand that at first this may seem complicated, but that just isn't true because the entire game is effectively a tutorial for hard mode. And because you're always learning as you play, it never feels stale. Doom even lets you choose what stats and runes to upgrade. I spec entirely into mobility and ammo, making my character a flimsy, crack-addled spider monkey. As a side note, we should release dozens or possibly hundreds of macaques into New York City. They can survive there. Why does Thailand yeah. get to keep all of the good monkeys? So what more is there to learn about Doom Eternal? Well, have you ever given thought to the various unwashed baboons that I'm fighting? The answer may shock yeah, you. I, I, I surprisingly, yes. I mean, As you may have thought. guessed, there are at least three, perhaps four demons in the game, which is a lot for someone who is a small, blonde anime lolly such as myself. But it's the variety okay. of the demons that make the game interesting. <laughs> demons can fly they can roll around like hedgehogs, contract obesity, and be bastards. Who is Sandy Loam? Who is Sue Shima? Amy Rose? I didn't know she could stand. The point of the entire game, therefore, <laughs> is to balance targets, switch weapons, and scream internally as you repeatedly fail to be cool. Just like high school. What I'm getting at is every demon has completely different behavior and goals from... Yeah, he's right one another. The Doom <laughs> Hunter rolls around in a comically small tank. The zombies like us exist to die and the Marauder produces controversy. He does a lot of damage, blocks your attacks, fights you at wild speeds and can only be attacked after blatantly signaling so. I personally have no issue with him as I find the challenge fun and engaging and if you don't, I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm saying you're bad. I'm not getting into the details for each one since that's not funny but don't worry, there are 27 of them without DLC and if you're wondering why I'm fighting the entire cast of Don Pays Inferno, you're actually the minority. This game tries at every moment to make exposition collectible. Why is there just a, a fucking big spear in the planet, and why is heaven comprised entirely of moth people? You cannot stop the procession. It oh, feels like one okay. guy wrote the events of the game and another guy invented LSD just to write the backstory. So I'm going to combine both of them into a single, accurate interpretation of the Doom lore. If I say All something right. objectionable, just pretend that it's right. Okay. <laughs> I don't have any objections, uh, regardless. You're One in hell, I guess? Years so. ago, there was a guy named The Dad who was effectively God, and he made moths in lamp heaven called The Makers. Every 10,000 years, all moths combine their collective consciousness into one giga moth called the Con Maker, who is the Moth Pope. So the moths rule over the galaxy, sort of, until okay. Earth happens, and then we start fucking everything up. The Moth Pope finds John Doom after a spree of murders, and he explains to her that, yes, hell exists. It's weird that humans knew about hell before God. Yeah, Anyways, that is kind of weird. the Moth Pope, after finding out that hell is real, very reasonably decides 
to sacrifice a planet to it. See, it turns out that God literally pieced the fuck out like 10 million years ago and let the moth do whatever they wanted. So now the con maker cannot be replaced and cannot die. So she sort of goes insane from the constant immortality. Now the plan is to get some of that sweet hell energy by repeatedly sacrificing entire planets to the Dark Lord in exchange for it. Meanwhile, a sentient robot named Samuel Hayden is very busy on Mars. Earth has this problem called climate change and we need to find a new energy eh. source. So instead of something hard <laughs> okay. and difficult like solar power, Samuel Hayden is like, what if we extract this cool blue energy from hell? Also, it's on Mars. Earth does this until hell begins breaking into Mars Earth and John does Doom this. stops them, which is the plot of Doom 2016. <laughs> this makes Samuel Hayden mad because he's funded by the Koch brothers and really doesn't Ooh. want to build a windmill. <laughs> that is what it says. Uh, Charlie Kirk, what a douchebag. Um, by the way, that's not political. I just, you know, individually he's a douchebag. Uh, yeah, uh, I had an ex-girlfriend when I used to work in politics. She used to work for the Koch brothers. Or she, I think she still works for the Koch brothers. I know she lives in D.C. with her husband. <laughs> uh, no, nah, but it's not. that's not a political thing. It's just, you know, just look at him. So instead of destroying the demonic crucible, he just brings it back to Earth and catapults John Doom into the backstory planet. If you think that sounds unreasonable, just remember that we considered blotting out the sun before building a fucking solar panel. Yeah. I only poo -poo oh, Bill Gates. Unsurprisingly, demons invade to recycle Earth into blue energy for the Moth Pope, oh, so John Doom has to fight both Catholics and Hell. And as you go through the game, you might notice that it just brings up random shit at will. Like, oh sorry, the Soul Factory is being held there by two gigantic Titans, and it's like, okay, I guess Attack on Titan is real now. Doom Slayer, you'll need this knife to kill my son. Oh shit, what'd he do? He's the giant <laughs> Titan. The plot of the main game, to understate it, is psychotic, and acts as an increasing checklist of galactically convoluted tasks. Just in this one game, John Doom finds an ancient city like three times, goes to the North Pole to kill Santa, fights Croatia, does a little trolling, does a little cock fighting, heaven, and permanently kills God, but we'll get back to that. Doom 2016 took place on Mars, but this game has you slung around the universe oh. on a fucking bungee cord, okay. so I understand completely when people say they don't play Doom Eternal for the plot. They're just wrong. I play Doom Eternal for the plot, and that might sound strange to you, but Eternal's plot is pure insanity and it does everything that it needs to. We are painfully aware it that looks the plot great. exists as a contrivance because the environmental designer went fucking ballistic. I just don't yeah. care. I played every single level gleefully wondering, oh boy, what stupid shit is next? I cannot fucking wait. So play the game for the plot. It is integral to the experience of Doom Eternal. Oh, but Max, or there's a plot hole. How did the Doom Slayer get the first? <laughs> everything I've said so far, <laughs> except some of it, applies in full partially to the base game. But there's 40 dollar dues of DLC where the gameplay is fast the challenge harder, and the plot somehow even fucking worse in all the right departments. 2016 was a walk. Eternal is Usain Bolt, and the ancient gods is fucking Venezuelan inflation. You thought it was over when John Doom beat the demons and destroyed all of heaven, but you were wrong. That's just the beginning. And with both parts of the DLC now fully out, my recommendation cannot be understated. Let's get into why, and more importantly, what... Okay. <laughs> Uh, I love this. This section of the video is going to be so much autism. structural and aligned with the plot of the DLC. Because the gameplay isn't what's new about the product, it's the challenge and the story. I originally wrote an entire script for this and then trashed it because it doesn't truly communicate how this DLC drove me to insanity and I hard cope by simping for 2D women. I will tell yeah, you if there's you a know what? big game I'm with change, you, buddy. but the point of the DLC is more of what's amazing. If you like Doom Eternal, you will like the DLC. Period. Okay, so Samuel Hayden, you might know him for his various appearances on political Never heard of debates advocating for carbon <laughs> positivity. It turns out that he's not a robot. He's a fucking angel. Also, John oh, Doom's what? Alexa is God. That's not a joke or exaggeration. His name is Vega, and he's the physical remnant of God's consciousness in AI form. Huh. So Samuel, now a fucking divine being, wants you to revive him since both God and Satan are trapped in volleyballs. At this point, the video can't count as spoilers because it makes no fucking sense. The first DLC is essentially trolling because you kill God. Why? Well, obviously because. to revive Satan exclusively so you can fight him. What could go wrong? <laughs> of particular note here on the That's gameplay side badass. is the final boss who is Samuel Hayden because holy shit, this fight is hard. Also, the premise is ridiculous and my enjoyment of the game is hurt by neither. Every aspect of this is speedy, fun, and everything else I've already said about the game in general. And it when looks you pretty awesome. Samuel and revive the Dark Lord, it turns out he's you. Hmm. Yeah. 
the only thing in the world that could possibly kill John Doom himself. No blood can be seen than this holy blood. So now the not you you decides to go to hell where we all belong, and the second DLC mm -hmm. is just chasing mm -hmm. him. This is, of course, where the testosterone moves into critical levels. How do By the way, I, I have to do the Genshin Impact one next. Uh... Yeah, I, I tried to play Genshin Impact once. Uh, I think I just got bored with the loading process. Honestly, I think I just... I, when I used to drink, I think I was drunk, and I was just like... <laughs> Genshin... Yeah, anime girls. Does one get to the capital never city of hell? Well, that's a great question. First of all, go to the planet of Argentinur. Light the bat signal. Learn how to train your dragon, okay? Go into the giant spear that pierces the entire planet for some reason. Get the key to the gate of Divum. Now go back to Earth, traverse the Last of Us 2, and find the gate of Divum. But before I get to the final showdown with Crash Bandicoot Twin Sanity, there's some cool gameplay I want to talk about. You have a fucking hammer in this DLC. Primarily used to defy the laws of gravity, but secondarily gives you everything in the game. Health? No problem. Ammo? Absolutely. My deepest, darkest urges? Yeah. Yes. As I used this, I became more obsessed with hammers than Bob the fucking Builder. And there's plenty of demons to use it on, since the DLC adds a shitload of reskins. For instance, the spirit is a congealed amphetamine mass that makes every infested target three times faster. Microsoft Pinball, who is fun to fight, I promise. And the Bloodmakers. They are my original OC. Do not steal it. So now that we've reached Cleveland, it's time for the DLC mm -hmm. to gain style. This is the culmination of all of our work. The final <laughs> battle against Satan himself. And holy shit, you can feel it. When the Sentinel army shows up and everyone's ready to kick ass, you just can't help but feel like your dick is being tickled. Cleveland lives up to the hype too, for once, because it's a non-stop battle of epic proportions right up until the final boss. This is a universe which implicitly acknowledges your godlike power by making the only credible threat to you your identical twin with red eyes in a gun note. That is called fucking gameplay. And it's a beautiful send-off right up until the man himself who awkwardly waddles around the arena like a penguin, but that's fine, the fight is still cool. Wow, you know, it's so sad that Steve Jobs died of Ligma. Who the hell is Steve Jobs? Ligma balls. <laughs> Got him! <laughs> <laughs> now, before we defenestrate, there's a few details I want to talk about that okay. truly complete this game, make it a real 10 out of good. Firstly, I would classify the music of this game as metal without guitars, awesome. and I fucking dig it so much. How do you make metal without a guitar? Well, you sample Mongolian throat singing and your lawnmower. It just sounds so good. Normally, music isn't very important, but it's so good that it's kind of bad. I don't know. And the role it plays. I disagree. I think music is very important in video games. I don't know. I think he might have been joking. Maybe. Uh... Is the mood is <laughs> I don't know anymore. Also, the main composer, Mick Gordon, like me, hey there. watches virtual YouTubers yeah, every waking yeah, second of does. his day. Great minds think alike. In fact, most of the music in this video is just Doom Eternal soundtrack. Guess you'll have to re-watch it over and over again to really listen. You know, I used to watch Peek Me. Used to. Finally, this game looks really good. Not in a, oh wow, look at all these particles I'm stroking out way. It's more like, how does literally anyone have time to model all of the geometry in the game? It is unreal. It is so downright inspired that it makes you feel bad while playing it. Doom Eternal is such a fast and pulse-pounding game that it's like sprinting through the fucking loop. How am I supposed to appreciate the Mona Lisa when it looks like this? Should you buy the game? Yes, I am very biased. If right. speed and action is what you crave and you want to induce cardiac arrest early, this is your game. I would like to thank the Demonic Brotherhood funding this channel <laughs> in exchange Prager for their you. souls. If you would like to engage in blood sacrifice on my behalf, and you can of course my Patreon. What happened to the Nostalgia Critic? I haven't seen anything from him recently. I don't know if he's just like, uh, like shadowed or something. I, I would assume he's still making stuff. I don't know what's going on with that. Oh, it's the end of the video anyway. Yeah, I'm to sorry. Learn more. Thank <laughs> you I was kind of... And of course, run their coming. Yeah, I was going to go on a huge rant about the Nostalgia Critic just now for no reason. <laughs> um, all right, there you go. Uh, Maxor, I like that one. Uh, makes you want to buy the game. Uh, yeah, I've seen gameplay of it, and it looks pretty fucking awesome. But this was like I made a couple of years ago, I think. Uh, was it? We just made a couple of... Yeah, a year ago. All right. 
What's in my watch later? Yeah, more stuff. All right. <laughs> uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate it. Appreciate all the new subs. Uh, I think, like, I saw like 150 new subs in the past uh, three months. So, or no, this last month, just in one month, I think. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, I think like almost 300 subs in the last three months. So I really want to thank everybody for that. I've I've been more consistent with the YouTube because um, it got it just turned fun after I stopped drinking. So yeah, uh, coming up on six months sober next month. Do a special stream or uh, not a stream, but a special video. <clears throat> Who knows? Maybe I'll get better internet. Uh, yeah, so uh, thanks a lot. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, please like and subscribe. -y. Leave comments if you want to suggest something or just want to chit-chat. Um, all right. Um, bye.